Hey, welcome back to Left 4 Dead Garage, where in this episode, we're going to take this GM SI series alternator and turn it into a one wire alternator. And that's a, where a voltage regulator does not need ignition to excite the field and charge your battery. It just works off RPM. So it makes things a lot more simple. And I've not done one in a while and, you know, felt like going back to my roots, I guess. So bought a kit off eBay, which may or may not be a good idea. Um, guess I should, uh, could probably do like unboxing videos with some of this stuff instead of me getting home on lunch, like the kid on Christmas and just ripping into everything. So what we have here, This is a GM 10 SI or 12 SI series regulator. Got a diode trio. Comes with one handy dandy pin. I'll show you what that does. It even comes with a new brush holder, brushes and springs. So really all I need is this guy. So first thing you wanna do is get tools and I have none of those. So I'll be right back. All right, first thing you wanna do is mark these housings. That way you know exactly which way it was when you took it apart. At that time, if, it, if this, like personally, I would like to clock this thing, which I probably will, it goes on the car kind of like this and the power studs a little close to the head so i may actually clock this back housing may not it'll probably be all right either way so but keeping it this way this factory little bracket bolts on spacer rather i can leave that where it's at this thing's pretty snug dang Five sixteenth socket takes these four long bolts out. These just hold the the halves together. I should have got a bearing kit for this thing. Wasn't really thinking about it. Um, maybe it'll be all right. If not, I'll put a little. This is a this is a roller bearing in the back. This little cap and that front bearing, the big bearing is a sealed bearing, 6404, I think, maybe. It's been a long time. But I'll stick some grease in this back half. Brushes were, brushes were pretty worn in this thing. This is your stator. That's what creates the magnetic field, if I remember right. That's the rectifier down in there. I don't remember what that does, just being honest. Could have probably Googled that, but I didn't. So, maybe you should Google it. This is your rotor. We'll take some emery cloth or whatever clean up the, this copper. There's no grooves in it, that's good. So, it's not been hitting. Obviously the bearings are good, so. Set this aside. Let me grab this back half. I feel sure I didn't get the right socket. Be back again. Used to build a ton of these for tractors. 
I'm gonna remove this stator, set it aside. Just kind of look over everything. This has actually got like a insulation, like a coating on it. Make sure nothing's burnt. Make sure the rotor has not been rubbing inside there. If it's burnt, it'll smell. It'll have that sweet stank smell. I don't know how to describe it. This is what it looks like without the rotor. Oh. There's the spring for the brush. You see the brushes are pretty well worn. There's your regulator and the brush holder is all right here. The regulator actually goes under the brush holder. We won't remove this, the rectifier. I'm just going to take this out. I'll clean it out a little bit. I'm going to paint this thing. Just kind of make it blend in. I'm just going to spray it black. We don't need those old brushes, those brush springs. Now, two of these bolts are have an insulator underneath the head one does not so make sure that they go back where they're supposed to go if fun things could happen all right here's everybody as an assembly brush holder diode trio the regulator and it looks pretty pretty cooked although the truck was charging so all right the little handy dandy pin thing i'm about to show you what the deal with that was i already had a one wire alternator but i figured i found myself i don't know why i was even watching this but I found myself watching a how-to video on plugging a tire the other day. I didn't even realize I was watching it until about midway through. I was like, why am I watching this? So, and then that had me thinking, well, not everybody knows how to do that. So, why not show somebody that you can do a one-wire alternator? Well, this kit was $13 off eBay. So, if you already have a 10 or 12 series, 10 or 12 SI series, GM alternator, 13 bucks. That's good. 13 bucks. You can build one wire. All right, I'm going to take the brush holder. We're going to lay it down in there. And there's actually a, oh, this pin. The pin holds the brushes. That's all it does. And there is a hole in the back of this housing. I'll show you when I put it through there. I'll show you where the pin is. It holds the brushes back so when you drop this guy down in there, the brushes will slide past the rotor. And when it's all together, said and done, you just pull the pin out, the brushes are seated against where they're supposed to go, everybody's good. All right. Got everybody installed, brush holder, regulator, diode trio. I have no idea what this is, can't remember. I'm gonna push this pin right flush with that holder. The car's not running, so I can't immediately show you a quick and easy way to see if, if, especially one of these alternators is charging. And I've checked others the same way, but I will show you on the white C10. So I'll show you a quick, easy way to check because right there is all you need. You got a good pocket knife, not one that's stainless, but you know, carbon steel blade, screwdriver will work, a wrench anything but i'll show you at the end of the video on how to check that doesn't tell you voltage but it'll tell you if it's working or not so let's stick this stator back in there this thing did fit a little snug so put the nuts back on those just go around shine it up Find our mark right there. Take our back housing, find our mark right there. Let's drop everybody together. Hopefully I didn't forget anything. Drop those in. That pin, just pull it out. I don't know if you can see in there or not. That's your brush holder. There's the regulator, battery stud. And that, folks, is now a one wire GM alternator. So all I have to do, 12 volts of this stud, 
after a certain RPM, it's charging. Um, I can get away with running a smaller or larger pulley to slow this down. You don't want to go too slow because it won't turn enough RPM at idle. But in a high RPM situation, or circle track or whatever, mud truck, something along those lines where the RPM's high all the time, you don't want to just spin the bejesus out of this this alternator, put a, put a larger pulley on it, slows it down, but it's still charging. It's raining right now, so, and it's dark, but I'll show you tomorrow in the daylight how to check for charging without using a multimeter. I'm gonna get some black paint on this thing, make it look newish, throw it back on the car. That's all I got, I'm out of ideas. See you tomorrow. Alrighty, I'm gonna show you how to uh, quickly check your alternator to see if it's charging. Got the old C10 here. All right, where are this powerhouse? 4.3 liters of fury. Pocket knife. Everybody has a pocket knife. I'm talking to my kids here. Where's your pocket knife? All right. Hopefully you can see this. all right well i guess that'll do it for this one um but yeah if it's running and charging you might rev it up a little bit there will be a magnetic field right there at that bearing housing that's probably pretty normal for all alternators all in the rectifier i couldn't i couldn't let it go i had to figure out what it did it uh converts ac to dc yeah that's what it does so but thanks for watching you got any questions um, if I did anything wrong, call me out. That's fine. You know, if you got any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll try my best to answer them. Hey, I appreciate you taking the time to watch these videos. Um, if you don't mind, uh, like, share, subscribe. I'd really like for you to subscribe. Uh, click the bell to receive a notification, you know, when I do post, which is typically weekly. Sometimes I'm a day or two late. And check out these other pages too. They're, you know, they're, they're constantly, uh, supporting my channel uh, Robert's Garage, Straight Six Fan, uh, Roy Marco's Garage, Old Car Guy, Coastal Auto Reaction, The Car Guys. I'm sorry if I forget somebody because I go like brain dead every time I go to do this. But yeah, check out those guys. I'll leave links in, in the description box to those and several other guys. Again, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.